how about a big round of applause for the best pinch hitter in the history of Major League Baseball, Gates Brown. Striding out of the dugout, the citizens of Detroit arose to show the league's leading pinch hitter how much they appreciated his record-breaking contribution. From the crowd, you'll see the microphone. Raise your hand and have a question. Seven years old in 68, was at home screaming at the radio. Late at night, you did a home run to win the game. Did you know we were there celebrating with you? Well, you were the only one that really keeping me going. And uh, I, uh, it was quite a thrill. You don't know what it is being on a winner. And especially where I came from. You enjoyed every game. You lived life on the field as well as off the field. And uh, they attested that by Norm Cash. You know, there was a lot of games. Norm would come in the clubhouse, and I swear, dead drunk. I, I use the word. First thing he'd do, he'd go in the trainer's room, drink a bottle of Pepto-Bismol, get in the shower, take a hot shower and a cold shower. And he'd tell the pitchers, if you can hold them for seven, I'll be ready. <laughs> And I'd be damned if he didn't win a few games that way, you know, hitting home runs. And uh, you don't know what it is playing with a guy like Norm Cash, but I guarantee you every team needs a guy like Norm Cash to win. Oh, man who scored is up there now waiting on a 3-2 pitch from John. Watch out. That one uh, just about hit him. I think Max a little perturbed. He's yelling out the Tommy John. Now he goes at him, and John tackles McCauley. Here comes Pete Ward in, Mickey Stanley. Salerno's there in the middle, and both dugouts empty, and the teams are going at it. Gates Brown is out there, and now the umpires are trying to separate the combatants here, and I think the situation has been still. John, I believe, has hurt his... Well, the only thing that really made me angry is I messed up two good hot dogs, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, I enjoy the game. You know, a lot of guys say, well, let's watch the game, and you get into it. The only way I could get into a baseball game is not getting into it. So I put my mind in a lot of other places, and then whenever I got the chance to hit, I think it relaxes me. It relaxed me a little more, and uh, I went up and did what I had to do. The only thing I wanted was one good pitch to hit. And when I would take bad practice and the pitchers would be trying to work on their curveball, I would always say, throw me the fastball, and they would get angry. Well, I say, you know, I'm not going to go up there looking for a curve to hit, because if you do, you're going to be having, have to carry a lunch bucket. I always tried to picture myself getting a fastball in my mind and not missing it. And that was the key to my success. I, I didn't foul off a lot of pitches. I put a lot of pitches in play, which some of them I wish I hadn't, but, you know, you do. And uh, I did a lot of praying, even though I was an atheist. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, this when question I, when is When I slid in the second, the first thing that I said, I'll be damned, I got to get up. You know, and I knew that, you know, I had two hot dogs in my jerseys, ketchup and mustard and... I was just thinking about eating those hot dogs, man, getting back, getting back into the dugout and finishing them all. But, you know, it was a, uh, unless you've been on a winner, you can never know what it feels like to win. And after 67, there was no way that we was going to lose in 68 because that's how much we believed in ourselves. And it came to pass.